Okay, I wanted to make a quick video here talking about Elden Ring. Now, as you can see, I've got the Frenzied Flame. We cured it with the needle. I don't even know if the, yeah, the needle doesn't stay in your inventory. But you can see I have the snake eyes from Volcano Manor, not the glowy eyes from uh, the Frenzy Flame. But here's the important thing. This is every single great rune. And this is every single mending rune. Now, if you've been a part of the hunt for the Age of Absolute ending, then you're going to say, well, this is it. You, you... You, you burn the tree with the frenzied flame, then cured it, then activated every single great rune, then got every mending rune. But I did a... I went a step further here. I did every single NPC quest that is not cut content or unfinished. I'm going to talk about that in a second. I've done everything. Everything that there is to do. Alright, you, you see, there is there is nothing left. Every NPC, every rune, every mending rune, everything that could be done is done. And if we touch her, I mean, we got all the options, but there's nothing else. And if we just mend the Elden Ring normally, you'll see the, the ending we get. Now, while this ending plays, I just wanted to talk about the Age of Absolute ending for a bit, because it is 100% not a thing. So, that's not true. It was a thing, but it was cut from the game. There is a lot, and I mean a lot. Oh, that's the wrong gloves, but whatever. Uh, they, there's a lot of cut content in this game, like a lot of cut content. And I have a couple links here on the other monitor that I'm going to put in a frame to prove this. And this ending, the Age of Absolute, was one of the cut ones. And I've got a bit of a theory, but we'll get into that in a second. So as you can see, it's the same Elden Lord ending. Even if you do every single NPC quest, every, just everything, it doesn't matter. Now, the yeah, yeah, the fallen leaves tell a story. Yeah, whatever. A story. Yeah, but you see, this is the same. This is the same Elden Lord. There's, Elden Lord. They, there's nothing to this. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. I think I can just skip this now, right? Like, everyone's seen this by now? Will, well, will he say anything different here? Because this, this is what tells you the new endings. An age Fracture. Yeah, yeah, whatever. It's the same ending. Okay, so. Okay, yeah, go away. Okay, so. We need to shut up, music. Right, 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 right. Okay, so this is the speculation and thing time. So we know that this game is a lot of cut content. Pretty much every data miner has confirmed this. Uh, Kenneth Haggith and Nefeli Lou, their quest is in unfinished. She gets the Stormhawk Queen King, and that's it. It just ends. She, they both literally disappear from the game. Now. That's not meant to end there. It's meant to keep going. And I, we know this This is pretty obvious. Not only have data miners confirmed that there are multiple references to Nefeli Lu in Kenneth Haggish scripts, but we also know that, well, because as well, once you beat Godwin the Golden, you walk into his throne, and there's an Elden throne there in his castle that you can't attack, and there's literally nothing that happens there. Uh, she's obviously meant to be the Lord there. And then this is ignoring the fact that we have data miners that can outright confirm this. But it's pretty obvious. But the part that I'd like to really emphasize here is... Here is the strongest evidence I feel that involves no data mining, no nothing. Just the best inference as to why this is for sure, for sure uh, a thing that's meant to be but isn't. But is cut. So in the opening to the game, the intro... 
Every single named NPC has a rune. Every one of them. Every lord that she names has a rune. And every tarnished NPC that he talks about has a mending rune. With one exception. And that's Ofnir. Ofnir is the only NPC that is called by name. Well, I guess, um, what's his name? Horalu counts. But he's in a weird spot because he is the Elden Lord, but he wasn't the Elden Lord under that name. So he kind of just like, you know, is a tarnished and he just fucks off. So, you know, he exists, he's there. Really, he was going to be very likely a part of Nefeli Lu's quest because he's their fucking dad. They have the same last name. She's the Barbarian. He is the Warrior. They both come from the Badlands. She is way younger than him. It's The connection is so obvious. So he it just so happens to be uh, very closely connected to a character who is very closely connected to Ofnir. And guess what? Ofnir, we know from data mining and the whole, uh, you know, Corvex potion and nonsense, he is connected to her quest too. And when you tell him about all of the, <coughs> excuse me, when you tell him about the three hidden lords, he just so happens to say that this is the final bit of information that the round table needed, then he tells you to go and fuck off. Now, if you've paid attention to his dialogue throughout the game, he refers to himself as the round table. And you, once you get a great rune and become great rune and become a part of it, he very clearly does not think of the round table as this place. The only time he mentions it really as a place is when he welcomes you to it and mentions that it's burning. But every other time he talks about it, he talks about it in the context of himself. You know, he says like, you know, he says, "I will give you, you know, I'll bestow upon you this rune, you know, this ancient rite of knowledge." If you help complete the round table's repository of knowledge, which he is the all knowing for which he thinks it's his duty to that this repository of knowledge is his. And there's times when he outright directly, you know, welcomes you to the round table. And then he says, as a member of the round table, we are he he has a lot of references to the round table as himself. But the point I'm getting at here is he mentions how the unlocated demigods are the last bit of information that he needs. But what does he need it for? Well, it just so happens that he's tied in to a quest line that is unfinished. It's cut content. And it just so happens that this quest line, you know, all these things just tie together. He's the only named NPC that doesn't directly relate to a great rune. Every other NPC, and, and, fun fact, these three mending runes, which are in their own unique category, all come from NPCs that are named subsequently to Ofnir, in order. I don't know, I think that's just a little interesting. But, so he's very clearly an outlier here, in that he's named in the same fashion as everyone else who drops a rune, but he also mentions needing to know the location of the last few demigods for some reason. And the other thing that's interesting is, once you get your second great rune, he tells you to go, you know, the two fingers... If you talk to him about Morgoth in the round table before you go to the capital, he tells you, before you get your second rune as well, he tells you that, it's, that the two fingers won't let you go there until you have enough runes to complete the Elden Ring. So that means it becomes unlocked once you get a second rune. So that means you can complete the Elden Ring with just two runes. Despite that, and despite him directly telling you to go there to fix the Elden Ring, he still needs the final runes for some unstated reason. And that becomes way more suspicious when you consider the fact that he's tied in to these quest lines that are unfinished and... He's also the only named NPC that has no relation to Great Runes. So he's an outlier in that regard. And he's an outlier in the regard that he is directly tied in to a cut content quest. 
that deals with becoming a lord. Because Nefeli Lu is meant to become a lord. And if you want some evidence of this, don't take my word for it. Take fucking Zuli the Witch, who is a very, very well-known and well-respected data miner. Almost every single data mine that she's shown us on her YouTube channel, or just on Twitter, has ended up being true. She has a beautiful near 100% confirmation track record. And if that's not enough for you, this Reddit user, of course he has a stupid fucking name, Fuda Snake, but he gets this information from another fairly well-known data miner. And what's very interesting is the discoveries here. About Mikola and St. Trina. And all this nonsense. And this makes total sense in the context of the game. Because everybody loves Mikola for some reason. Melania loves Mikola. Mog loves Mikola. Ofnir talk about, talks about Mikola in a very positive light. Everyone who mentions Mikola is absolutely in love with the guy, despite the fact that he doesn't really do anything. He's just an egg. But what's interesting about him is he is very likely meant to have a much bigger role in the plot. Because if you read the description of Mikola's needle, it talks about how his needle was directly a measure of fighting the outer gods. He's also the only person, at least as far as I'm aware, that is able to cure the Scarlet Rot. That at least is directly referenced. So he not only has the power to stop Outer Gods, which the Erd Tree... I, I, I don't know if this is true or not. I only got to read a little bit of it. But it's very, very likely that the Erd Tree is not natural and is probably an alien. Just like the natural born of the Void. And the whole reason it's here is to suck the souls out of people. Which is why when you die, your soul returns to the Erd Tree. So it's very, very, it's, it's almost guaranteed that the Erd Tree is just like the natural born of the Void. And is not native to this planet. Or the lands between at all. And is here for a nefarious purpose. You know, and it just so happens that Mikola is the only person who seems to be able to stop these outer gods. You know, the Scarlet Rot, uh, the Voidborn, the tree itself, just so ha and, you know, the Flame of Frenzy. Just so happens that all of these immensely powerful heretical things that are able to destroy the Erd Tree, he's able to stop all of it. And he's the offspring of Radagon and Makira, which is a weird form of incest, but whatever. So he's one of the demigods that was born of, like, the true godhood and all that. And it just so happens that he is seemingly the most powerful of all of them. And he's also directly tied in to Ofnir. And he was cut content as well. So Ofnir directly ties in to all of these things that were cut from the game. But yeah. Uh, I just want to, I looked this up and I could not find any evidence, like any videos being posted of someone who's went through all of the supposed steps for the Age of Absolute. How long has this recording been, actually? Oh my god, it's 13 minutes of me being a retard just talking about nonsense. Yeah, I'm going to shut up now. Uh, if you only came here for that evidence, I hope you got what you were looking for.